Good evening, everyone. Phil here, and welcome to the Daily Wrap for what was Saturday, the 30th of March, 2024. Ooh, guess what? It was a refreshing, awesome day of streaming. Why? Because the RPG overload is done, and we are now into new games, and both streams, in my opinion, were fun gameplay experiences, great interactive experiences with the audience. I had a great time today overall. I really, really did, and... uh I want to say thanks to everyone who came out because today attendance was much greater than it's been in weeks. You know, having only been playing Baldur's Gate 3 and Like a Dragon Infinite, well, you get a certain crowd, but it's not the mainstream crowd. And today, a lot more people came out. A lot of people said, we're back. We're back to check out games with you again. We know that we've been staying away. And, you know, you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I missed you guys. You know, you, you see new people who are usually regulars and haven't been around in a while because they're just not interested in the games that I've been pushing to finish. And to see people come back is nice to see familiar faces. You know what I mean? So great podcast today where I gave my final thoughts on both Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, and Baldur's Gate 3, by the way, both of which are good games. Um, it's not like I, I slammed either one or anything like that, uh, but I gave my honest thoughts about them. And then on today's first stream, we started my playthrough of Alone in the Dark. And funny because I remembered that right when I had started on YouTube in 2008, I, there was another Alone in the Dark reboot attempt that I played that I thought was atrociously bad. Um, and now here we are, 2024, many, many years later, and I'm playing another one. Um, let me just put it this way, in a nutshell. Surprisingly good. From all the negativity that you heard from people reviewing this game, um, I liked it a lot. I played three hours of it, and it has a creepy atmosphere. It's about an investigator who's teamed up with a, 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 a woman who's the, the, the niece of a uh, wealthy man who apparently has put himself into this like house of healing, okay? So it's a home out kind of in the woods where uh, a lot of people are staying supposedly for different kinds of mental or medical treatment. And he's one of the, the people who's staying there as a patient. <clears throat> And the niece is wondering what the heck's going on, where, you know, what's actually happening. Apparently, her uncle thinks he's possessed, and that's why he went there and, and put himself into this medical care. Uh, as soon as you show up at the house, crazy stuff starts happening. Like, <clears throat> you start getting the vibe that something weird is going on. You get sucked into an alternate dimension. There's mold monsters and other things and, and creepy maggot things and all kinds of stuff going on. Um... As the, I picked the investigator because you get to pick two different characters. So as I played as the investigator, the story got interesting. You start learning about the history of this house and how it used to have different histories. At first, it was a place where pirates were staying. And then after a while, there was a group of artists that were staying there. And then it got blown down by a hurricane and rebuilt back up. And now it's this, this house of healing thing. Um, kind of interesting backstory. And then, of course, you get to learn the individual histories of each person who's staying there as a patient and what they're doing there. And the house is like a big maze. It's similar to, say, Resident Evil, where you can't go in certain rooms. They're locked. You have to find ways to open them from the other side or find a special key that's hidden. There's a lot of puzzles so far that I've solved, none of which have been overly annoying. There's one or two that maybe at first were a little tricky, but I figured them out. Um, so I'm three hours in. The, I would say the one thing that's kind of weak is the combat, but I think it's meant to be because they want you to feel kind of scared that you're not, like, a super agile person. I mean, you're, you're a big... The main character is played by David Harbour. He's a big, burly dude, but he's not exactly the most fast, right? So I think it's done on purpose so that you don't feel like you're super agile. Imagine if it was like Resident Evil 6 and you could just dodge every attack from every enemy because you have like this dodge button and stuff. Like, it's not like that, you know? Um, but the combat's very basic, nothing too advanced about it. It's just, right now it's just bullets and mash melee attacks. So I'm sure maybe you'll get more advanced the further in that you get. But uh, it really, the, the core focus of the game is the story, the atmosphere, and the puzzles. All of those, in my opinion, so far are fine. So I had a great time, and man, it's been a long time since we had a decent survival horror game. You know, I tried Resident Evil Zero a few months ago and, you know, ended up rage quitting it because the end was soft locked. And then we had that stupid Silent Hill, the short message game, and that one sucked ass. This game seems pretty darn solid, and it has a cool story and a cool atmosphere. So if you like survival horror, you like my survival horror playthroughs, definitely give it a watch. I'm really liking it right now. But you know, it's funny because the reviewers all panned it. Oh, oh, it's so outdated and <clears throat> the combat's too basic and all that. And it's like, not every game has to be an ultra modern, super refined game. This game feels like a classic survival horror just with better graphics and an interesting story and a great actor playing the main character. I, I don't see what's wrong with that. So far, you know, three hours in. The game reportedly is anywhere 
from 10 to 15 hours long, depending on how much time you spend, you know, solving puzzles, looking for clues, etc. Um, I guess we'll see as we get further in just how good the game is. Okay? Anyway, good stuff. Good start. And I really enjoyed it. And by the way, attendance on the stream was great. Support was great. So no complaints whatsoever. It worked really well as a daytime stream. Uh, tonight's late stream was Dragon's Dogma 2, returning to the game for the first time in uh, over a week. Remember, I played it for five and a half hours on release day, and then I had to put it on hold to finish the other games that I was playing. But it came back tonight, and uh, it was pretty fun. I jumped back into the mix doing questing. Uh, I basically had several different quests I had to do. One was a sneaking mission where you had to get some intel. One was I had to go into a dungeon and basically, like, talk to a guy who was incarcerated, and I guess this is going to lead to a quest later. Um... And then I went on these monster hunting missions where I went out with my party and we had to hunt different groups. First, we hunted a group of goblins in a cave and we actually rescued someone in there. And then we actually went to another cave and fought a bunch of Saurians. So this is a new uh, enemy type we hadn't fought yet. That was the lizard people. And then we basically headed into the part of the map where there's a ton of them. So we were like fighting them all night. These lizard people uh, had a few mini boss fights. I fought a ogre, fought a cyclops and it's a lot easier now because I have a new ability called Gouge where you get on their weak point and you just keep stabbing at the weak point over and over like this and it just goes doo, 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 big chunks of energy coming off their health bar. So much easier now <clears throat> to fight the mini bosses now that I have the ability to do that. So uh, overall tonight, leveled up a ton. Uh, ended up rec recruiting more powerful pawns. Uh, a lot of people, I think it was like five or six people had used my pawn over the last week. And because of that, I got a bunch of points. And by the way, FYI, I did show off my pawn's ID code uh, tonight on stream in the in the video, so you could see it in the videos tonight. So if you want to summon my pawn and use them in your playthrough, you can. Although they're very my pawn's low level. He's like at this point like level fourteen, because uh, that's where I am. Actually, I think he hit level fifteen by the end of tonight. So uh, you would be able to summon him and use him in your playthrough. That actually gives me credit, like the rift coins, if you do that. So it would be cool if you did. Um, but outside of that, uh, fun, just a fun stream. Now. And we did two of the monster hunts. There's one left to do. And then after that, I think you advance the story. It worked. Let me put it this way. The game worked nice as a late night chill stream. It really did. The attendance was actually pretty good. We had almost 400 viewers for a late night chill stream of an RPG. That's good. The support wasn't great, right? We had some super chats. I think we had a membership. We had like $10 in tips, right? Not amazing. But at the same time, if I have a good day stream, it doesn't matter if the night stream bowls me over with support. You know what I'm saying? So this balance of having alone in the dark as the day stream and Dragon's Dogma as the night stream, it worked today. It did. It was a good combination, two completely style, different styles of games, new games. It definitely worked, okay? So, enjoy the new videos. They will be live on the channel. I hope you'll check them out. Um, tomorrow is React Day. That's Sunday. Easter Sunday, by the way. So if you celebrate Easter, happy Easter to you. I'll be on stream all day with a Level 1 podcast here on DSP Gaming. Then I'll swap over to my DSP Reacts channel for my weekly react show, DSP vs. the Internet, where I watch clips that the members submit. And then on the late night stream, it will be uh, Retro React, and we're going to be starting up a new game, Bully Scholarship Edition. That's the game that you guys voted for over the last week. I'm excited to see how it turns out, and I hope that you'll come and hang out with me 6.45 p.m. Pacific Time on the DSP Throwback channel for the beginning of the Bully Retro React. If it does well, meaning if we get people who show up, engage, and support that stream, I will consider continuing Retro React as a Sunday night stream every week. Originally, it wasn't created or even imagined to be a weekly stream. I was going to do it maybe twice a month or so, uh, if that. And then people just liked Heavy Rain so much that they wanted it more often. I said, all right, we'll do it every week. And six straight weeks of awesome times with Heavy Rain, but now that's done. So if Bully goes well, I'll continue keep going. You know, also the thing is we don't have to do the same game every week. We could easily swap between many classic playthroughs week to week if that's what you guys wanted. You know, I could see us going between Bully, Dark Souls 1, maybe a different game and kind of going between them every every week. And that's fine for variety, but I'm only going to do that if people show up and engage in support. If the streams end up starting to get slow and dead because we're doing them every week, then I'm not going to do them as often. That'll make them more special, okay? So if you're saying, now wait a minute, you just went back to a variety of games, and now you're not playing those games tomorrow? Well, that's just how the cards fell with the schedule this week. But on Monday, we'll do it all again. It will be Alone in the Dark on the first stream, and it will be more <coughs> uh, uh, Dragon's Dogma 2 on the late stream. So we'll redo today again on Monday and see how it goes, but it went really well today, all right? 
Keep in mind, there is more variety coming. I am going to return to Elden Ring sooner rather than later. In addition to that, my wife and I are going to do a co-op playthrough sooner rather than later. Just not sure exactly when yet. We're working out the details, but I'll let you know when I know. All right? Oh, and of course, I want to play the Battlefront collection uh, uh, one of these nights as well for variety. So. All right, everyone. Thank you. Great streaming day today. I was very happy to have variety come back to my streams with this good new games. I think, hope you'll enjoy the footage. Please check it out. This, to be honest, this channel needs viewership right now because it has been very low viewership in the last two months because it was RPG overload, but now that's over. I hope you'll check out the new game footage, and I'll see you tomorrow for React Day, all right? Everyone have a good night. Peace out.